I know, Ken. And the last couple move in, Spiritual Star and Tennessee Oak. And the field of eight steadies down in brilliant autumn sunshine as the gates fly open and they're away in the NEC St Ledger. Came out in a nice line and Gull Sovereign went to the lead early, taken on by Short Touch and Shirley's Delight is quickly into a handy spot. Linesman on the outside wants to over race a bit as they come over the rise the first time. Bozart is going to settle on the fence about fifth and then Brilliant Poet followed by Tennessee Oak and back at the tail Spiritual Star coming down to the 200 metres mark on the first occasion and Gull Sovereign who won this race two years ago by leading all the way is in front again led by a half to linesman who's settling better short touch third on the inside of Shirley's Delight about two and a half away Bozart on the inside of Brilliant Poet two and a half to the long striding Tennessee Oak and Spiritual Star back at the tail of the field as they leave the judge behind them and on the turn out of the straight in the St Ledger Gull Sovereign in his favourite role he led by about 30 lengths in a Melbourne Cup a couple of years back. He's not that far in front today, but he's high balling it out in the lead. Led by a bit more than a length, the linesman on the outside of Short Touch, followed by Shirley's Delight. Bozart on the inside of Brilliant Poet. Two and a half to Tennessee Oak and a length and a half away Spiritual Star who's lobbing along without a care in the world as they leave the 1800 mark behind them and it's Gull Sovereign speeding up a touch led by a length to Linesman. Short touch in third place as they go over the mile crossing and then Shirley's Delight two to Bozart on the inside of Brilliant Poet about three and a half or four to Tennessee Oak and a length and a half to Spiritual Star last in the back straight at the 1400 mark Gull Sovereign the leader three quarters to Linesman keeping in touch with him in third place short touch a half length away Shirley's delight Bozart on the inside a brilliant poet a gap to Tennessee Oak and a length away last is the grey spiritual star as they approach the 1200 metres mark in the NEC St Ledger Gull Sovereign the leader linesman second short touch third Shirley's delight fourth on the outside a length and a half away Bozart on the inside a brilliant poet followed by Tennessee Oak and spiritual star last as they reach the top turn at the 1,000 metres mark, Gull Sovereign still in front by a half to Linesman who's keeping the pressure on him. There goes Shirley's Delight taking off, making a surprise early move. Two lengths away, short touch, and then Brilliant Poet followed by Bozart and Tennessee Oak and Spiritual Star last about nine off the lead as they come to the 600 mark and they're fair dinkum now. It's Gull Sovereign, just the leader. Linesman on the outside, Shirley's Delight dropping off again, short touch on the fence, then Brilliant Poet. Bozart is saving every inch of ground. Now she's come to the outside of Shore Touch, followed by Tennessee Oak and Spiritual Star last as they thunder around the turn in the St Ledger. Over the rise and linesman in the Harry Lawton colours took the lead as they top the hill. Brilliant Poet coming after him. Bozart between horses and Spiritual Star coming right down the outside, but linesman has dashed away past the 150. Well clear of Spiritual Star who's running on gamely and then Tennessee Oak, but linesman, he can stay. He stays all day and half the night and linesman wins easily over spiritual star tennessee oak third then bozart brilliant poet shirley's delight short touch and gull sovereign last in the nec st ledger a brilliant win to linesman written by johnny marshall completes a double for john marshall who won earlier on amber and uh, he was riding a horse that stays all day so he didn't give them any starts he just traveled at the girth of the leader hit the front up the rise and flatly defied them over the last 200 metres. A very strong win to linesman in the popular and well-known and rather spectacular colours of syndicator Harry Lawton, the red with the black diamond, black and white striped sleeves and a white cap, colours that have been regularly seen in uh, winner's circles all over Australia. Linesman, $5.90 and $1.60 is trained by Gay Waterhouse and is by Touching Wood, who was a great stayer himself in England. Number one second, Spiritual Star, running a bold race, $2.30 on a track that probably wasn't yielding enough for him. So it was a big run under the circumstances and Tennessee Oak third is going to pay $2.10. Numbers are 713, 590, 160, 230 and 210. And the Gay Waterhouse wins her second St. Ledger Hilton. She won with uh, Tiakau Nick three years ago. Well done. Quite a, a few uh, past winners in that race with Bozart and also Gold Sovereign. Gold Coast race five, they are ready. 39 and the gross is 258.35. That's about three seconds outside the race and course record established last year by Bozart. 133.92, 35.39, 
and 258.35, about three seconds outside the race and track record. Now the Quinella is 32.60, the Trifecta 322.40, the Double is 92.80, and the Exacta is $80. Now, that gives Johnny Marshall a double for the day. He won earlier on Amber. But it's also John's second win in this race, the St. Ledger. He scored on a very, very good horse a few years back, namely Bozam in 1988. Bozam carried all before him that year, winning the Tancred Stakes, the AJC Derby and the St. Ledger. Linesman is certainly no Bozam, but he's a very tough and honest horse, and he stays... Uh, very well indeed. He's a bay gelding by touching wood out of line call. He's raced by T.J. Smith, J. Leslie, P. Aldrich, A. Howarth, A. McCormick and M. Grant. He's trained by Gay Waterhouse and ridden by Johnny Marshall, notching his second St. Ledger. And the horse was syndicated as a yearling by ever popular Harry Lawton and carried Harry's well-known colours. and linesmen look to be the three. He's won now. He won the St. Ledger. Uh, what, two years ago? Two years ago or last year? Uh, time gets away. He's a five-year-old. Might be two years ago when he won the St. Ledger. Now, too darn hot and ask the waiter have moved in together. Uh, we'll have them on their way shortly in the chairman's handicap. Linesman and Bonnie Busker are the two we're waiting on. Linesman still away, but Bonnie Busker is about to take his place in gate six. He moves in now. And just waiting for Larry Cassidy, fresh from his Doncaster triumph, to bring Linesman up on the extreme outside of the field. All set. A stepping stone to the Sydney Cup is the Group 3 Chairman's Handicap, ready to run. They're off. Nice start, came away in a good even line, and it'll be hard to find an early leader. Enjoyment is one of them. Max Victory is striding towards the front with Hickey Picker, too darn hot, Dance Hall Dame, and Linesman is being allowed to cruise over by Larry Cassidy as they come down towards the judge the first time, and it's Linesman on the extreme outside going to the lead in third gear by a length and a half to Too Darn Hot who's pulling on the outside of Max Victory Dance Hall Dame is about to sweep around them into second place followed by Bonnie Busker on the rails enjoyment on the inside of Orem Heights who's three deep and Hickey Picker between horses two lengths away Nimzo Indian two to ask the waiter and right out the back is Tennessee Oak as they swing out of the home straight 1900 metres from home Dance Hall Dame has pulled her way to the lead over Bonnie Busker getting to second linesman relegated to third he's travelling nicely. In fourth spot is too darn hot and then Max Victory on the fence followed by Orem Heights who's three deep 
Hickey Picker between horses on the rails enjoyment. A bit more than two to Nimzo Indian. A length and a half asked the waiter. Two and a half away last is Tennessee Oak as they go over the mile crossing. Into the back straight Dance Hall Dame is in front pulling by three quarters to Bonnie Busker. A length and a half to Linesman on the outside of Max Victory. Then two darn hot. Further back enjoyment followed by Hickey Picker and Orem Heights from Nimzo Indian. Asked the waiter second last. Tennessee Oak is the trailer as they go down the back to the 1200 metres mark. Now there's a move as a dance hall dame is headed by Bonnie Busker. In third place, too darn hot, followed by Linesman getting a nice run, and then Max Victory. Two and a half to Orem Heights enjoyment from Hickey Picker, Nimzo Indian, and the last couple of Tennessee Oak and Ask the Waiter. A thousand metres out or a bit less than that. Bonnie Busker is in front in the chairman's handicap. A bit more than a length. In second place, too darn hot. Linesman is now looming to third. He's three deep as they go over the crossing. From Dance Hall Dame, Orem Heights is three deep. Max Victory between horses. Two and a half away, enjoyment with Hickey Picker. Tennessee Oak is out three wide, working into the race. Followed by Nimzo Indian and Ask the Waiter as last as they come to the 600 metres mark. Linesman is level with Bonnie Busker. In fact, he's put his head in front now. Orem Heights is moving up on the outside. Dance Hall Dame is now hard at it. So is Too Darn Hot. Followed by Max Victory, Hickey Picker and Tennessee Oak about to be pulled to the extreme outside as they come over the rise. The two leaders are a mile in front. It's Linesman and Orem Heights. They're four on Max Victory. Followed by Nimzo Indian. Linesman has beaten off Orem Heights and away goes Linesman. He put about four lengths on Orem Heights followed by Nimzo Indian. But this is going to bolt in in the Harry Lawton colours. Linesman strongly to the line. Wins by four Four lengths. Nimzo Indian got second. Orem Heights third. Asked the way to fourth. Tennessee Oak only plotted. Followed by Max Victory. A mile back enjoyment. Followed by Hickey Picker. And then Dance Hall Dame. Too darn hot and tailed off his Bonnie Busker. Well, he looked the goods most of the way. Linesman ridden by Larry Cassidy and a winning double for Larry and for Gay Waterhouse in consecutive races. Linesman $5.70 and $2.10. Number three, Nimzo Indian, Darren Beedman second, $1.80. And Orem Heights third, number five, Stephen King to pay $3.20. Numbers on the chairman's handicap are one, three, five. 570, 210, 180, 320. Tennessee Oak got beaten half an hour. Did nothing. Uh, you've got to hope that uh, the two miles next Saturday uh, will suit him better. You can work out for yourself how far he got beaten here. There he is on the right side of your screen with the white sleeves, dark blue colours, white sleeves. What's he been beaten? Eight lengths. Be close to it. Seven or eight lengths. Gee, he's got to improve. Unless he is a dead set two miler. But I, I wanted to be on linesman a long way out. Here are the sectionals. The first 1400 in 131.24. The last 600 in 35.68. And the gross time is 242.63, so they're just outside the race record. And it's 131.24 and 35.68. Thanks, Tom. And, um, well, that's the situation. As Linesman comes back, he was syndicated by Harry Lawton as a yearling, and to this day carries the Harry Lawton colours, Matthew, which are well known on uh, racetracks all over Australia. Larry seems to have come back with a vengeance. Now he's kicked two goals in a row. And certainly this horse looks like a stayer, and he rode him like one today, didn't he? Yes, very much so. He's a good stayer, stayer. He's, he's by a horse called Touching Wood, and he is a very, very dour stayer. And the further he goes, the better he goes. OK, Randwick in the autumn, Gay Waterhouse, a double, including the Doncaster, and now the Chairman's. Linesman is a bay gelding, a five-year-old, by Touching Wood out of Line Call. Raced by T.J. Smith, J. Leslie, P. Aldrich, A. Howarth, A. McCormick and M. Grant. Trained by Gay Waterhouse, a winning double for Gay and for jockey Larry Cassidy. Three and three-quarter lengths, the winning margin. Three-quarters, second and third. Three and three-quarters by three-quarters. Quinella, 11.30. Trifecta, $218.30. Daily double, 61.70. Well, Larry Cassidy is the winning rider, and that's win number two. Everyone seems to ride doubles here today, Larry. That's nice for you. It is very nice. Um, good win by the horse, too. Now, this horse goes on to the Sydney Cup. Now he's a stout staying type, as we saw today. You choose to go forward early and then pick him up, get him travelling nicely, and then go into the race and make him a true staying test. Well, you can do that on him. He's, uh, you know, he had the Gay Waterhouse polish on him. She has him very fit. And, um, you know, you can make use of this horse a little bit because he does 
day and he'll stay all day so the Sydney Cup will will suit him. Well, you look like a man on a mission, Larry Cassidy. Good to see you back in the winner's circle. A, dub a double to Larry Cassidy, back in the big time after returning from Hong Kong. Derby winner to win the Cup since 1981. Last to move in. Thanks, Ken. Yes, they're ready for the swept Sydney Cup and Ebony Grove is the last one to go up. Can he do an our Paddy boy and a Kingston Town by completing this unique double, Derby and Cup? All set now. Starter has the button for the swept Sydney Cup as Ebony Grove goes in to complete the line and they're ready for the 3,200 metre marathon. Off and running in the cup, Sterling Emblem on the outside fired out of the gate and will be the early leader over Grand Master. Arctic centres away well. Nothing like a Dane is going through to be one of four or five leaders. Linesman's there too. And the Mayor, Orem Heights, is getting right along the fence to head them all off at the end of 200 metres or so. Orem Heights in front at the 600 metres mark on the first occasion. She wants to go faster. Linesman getting to second in third place, dropping into a nice posse now as Grand Master. Followed by Ed on the inside of Nothing Like a Dane. Estadard on the inside of Magnet Bay with Arctic Scent three deep on the turn the first time. Further back in the field then as they come over the rise in the home straight as Palace Verdes, followed by Nimzo Indian and then Tennessee Oak and well back Ebony Grove and Sterling Emblem after beginning well has now drifted back to the tail of the field but it's Orem Heights in front as they come down the home stretch on the first occasion with a lap to go when they reach the judge. Orem Heights pulling a bit, led by four lengths to Linesman, four lengths away Grand Master and a half length to nothing like a Dane. A bit more than a length to Ed on the inside of Magnet Bay. Istadard on the inside of Palace Verdes and Arctic Scent three deep and has been from the outset. Nimzo Indian on the inside of Tennessee Oak and the last couple Ebony Grove and Sterling Emblem as they head by the 2,000 metres mark and down the side they go. And it's Orem Heights with the head up in the air. She leads by three lengths to Linesman. A bit more than two to nothing like a Dane on the outside of Grandmaster. Magnet Bay on the outside of Ed. Arctic Scent is three deep and there's one taking off now from the tail of the field sterling emblem improving in a hurry palace birdies between horses on the fence as istadad tennessee oak is third last nimzo indian second last and ebony grove ridden patiently by johnny marshall is back at the tail of the field 12 links from the lead into the back straight approaching the 1400 meters mark orem heights in front and led by a length the linesman keeping her busy Two lengths away, Sterling Emblem, a half to nothing like a Dane on the fence. A length and a quarter to Grand Master, a neck to Magnet Bay on the outside. Followed by Ed, who's midfield as they race down the back. At the head of the others, Arctic Scent, Palace Verdes between runners. On the fence is Istadar. The gap then to Tennessee Oak with Nimzo Indian. And still Ebony Grove whips them in as they go up to the top turn at the 1,000 metres mark. Orem Heights led the pace as genuine now by a half length to Linesman. Two and a half lengths away, Sterling Emblem on the outside of nothing like a Dane. Two and a half to Magnet Bay, followed by Grandmaster. Ed has pulled out three wide. He's starting a forward move. Istadad is getting away from the rail, followed by Palace Verdes. Hard written now. Arctic Sense covered a heap of extra ground. She's under pressure, followed by Nimzo Indian. Ebony Grove between horses and Tennessee Oak on the outside is dropping out to last as they come to the 600 metres mark and linesman shot to the front. Linesman leads the cup field around the corner. He's two lengths or more in front of Orem Heights. Here's nothing like a Dane looming into second place, followed by Magnet Bay and then Istadard, Grandmaster. Ebony Grove is into the clear now and is giving them about seven lengths as they come over the rise where Linesman is a mile in front. Linesman by about four lengths to nothing like a Dane. Ebony Grove down the middle of the track. Istadard is battling away, but Linesman in the Harry Lawton colours is six lengths in front of Ebony Grove and nothing like a Dane. He's a fair dinkum, genuine stay, a Linesman. He could go around again. Linesman bolts away with the Sydney Cup. Nothing like a Dane has come again to get second. Ebony Grove dying on his run third. Istadard fourth, followed by Grandmaster Ed, Arctic Scent, Magnet Bay, Palace Verdes, Tennessee Oak, Sterling Emblem. Orem Heights and Nimzo Indian last in the swept Sydney Cup for 97. Linesman in the famous Harry Lawton colours has donkey licked the field in the Sydney Cup. Number eight, Linesman, ridden by Larry Cassidy. And what a week it's been for this expatriate Kiwi jockey, the Doncaster, the Galaxy, the Sydney Cup. 
linesman to pay better than eleven dollars eleven dollars sixty the win and three dollars fifty the place gay waterhouse has quinell of the cup nothing like a dane has come again to get second and jimmy cassidy rides the runner-up so on two occasions today the cassidy's have quinell of the race and uh, they're first and second in the Sydney Cup with Larry again prevailing. Nothing like a Dane to pay. $2.10. And number seven, third, Ebony Grove. John Marshall put in his uh, customary big spurt on top of the rise, but his run petered out short of the line. Ebony Grove pays a place dividend of $3.20. Now the first mile in 142.46, the last 600 in 36.33. 142.46 the mile, 600 in 36.33. That's a pretty good sectional at the end of a two mile race. And the gross time is 320.59. They're one and a half seconds outside the course record shared by Apollo 11 and Just a Dancer. Winning margin, five and three quarter lengths with a long head between second and third. And Linesman has now won the St. Ledger and the Sydney Cup on this track. He was syndicated as a yearling by Harry Lawton, so that's uh, Sydney Cup win number two for uh, the well-known syndicator. Harry also sold Darcher, a Sydney Cup winner a couple of years back. Linesman is a bay gelding a five-year-old by Touching Wood out of Line Call. Is raced by T.J. Smith, J. Leslie, P. Aldrich, A. Howarth, A. McCormick and M. Grant. Is trained by Gay Waterhouse, and Larry Cassidy rounds off a tremendous week, having won the Doncaster, the Galaxy, and now the Sydney Cup. He's only been back from Hong Kong a short time, and he needed a good carnival to relaunch his Sydney career, but he's certainly done that in a blaze of glory. And here's Larry coming back, wearing the Harry Lawton silks on board linesman. Brother Jimmy on Nothing Like a Dane. That horse raced as generously as I've seen him race in a long, long time. Nothing Like a Dane. He simply was outclassed at the weights and uh, gee there was a difference uh 51 and a half linesman 56 nothing like a dane but you know how sour he can get on occasions it, uh, it's a long time since i've seen him race as generously as that he really had his mind on it for his new jockey today but his uh, little larry and jimmy must be getting sick of the look of larry's backside <laughs> just at the moment jimmy needs a group one winner badly uh, to relaunch his career he hasn't been able to crack it for a group one since uh, resuming in January. Uh, and he's running out of Carnival Hilton. Yeah, his linesman coming back. And you can imagine what a thrill it is for the uh, syndicate members who purchased the horse from Harry Lawton as a yearling. And uh, this horse has now completed a St. Ledger Sydney Cup double. Struthy can stay, can he? He raced up on the pace all the way, kept the leader bobbing. And coming to the turn, uh, Larry Cassidy said, well, I'm off. I'll see you later. And linesman just exploded away, led by three lengths on the turn. And the further they went, the more he increased that margin. Harry's here today, Harry Lawton. He'll be very proud to see his colours in the winner's circle. From first to last? Is that right? 32 lengths covered the Sydney Cup field. Uh, the boys in the judges' box tell me 32 lengths from first to last. And what ran last? Uh, was it Orem Heights, the early leader? Might have been. Ed had the run of the race, disappointing. Uh, Magnet Bay, run of the race, disappointing. Oh, Istadad, he just plugged. He got into fourth place coming to the 200. And I thought he might at least run a drum there, but he didn't run the two miles yesterday at, at the weights. He had a beautiful run, didn't run the two miles. Uh, Palace Birdies, well, she was gone at about the 800. I saw Stephen King start to hunt her along a long way from home. And uh, Ebony Grove Hilt, I think it's more the fact that he didn't get the two miles than the fact that he might have been jaded by his derby run. I really do. He, he looked like he was going to be right in it, but uh, he just plugged the last bit. Nothing like a Dane's come again to beat him for second. Don't think he ran the two miles, do you? But I believe he's the best in Australia. He's the best I've seen since the legendary George Moore uh, because of his consistency and the fact that he gives every runner every chance on every occasion. A great rider and a great gentleman 
and he's about to uh, ring down the curtain on a magnificent, a short but magnificent riding career on Ask the Waiter, very fittingly trained by one of his dearest friends, former champion jockey Ron Quinton. Now they're just about set for the Tui Summer Cup, moving up into line is Ice and Glass on the outside of the field. Planet Hollywood goes in, Luther stands nicely, so does Josh Sticks and Ask the Waiter. He's a Dane bobbing the head around in barrier three. Racing writer in gate nine's a little fidgety. Jack and Archie held by an attendant. Off they go in the Tui Summer Cup and slow to move at the start is Racing Rider who went straight back to the tail of the field. Delinquent bounced out in front. Morning Mail is away quickly. Stony Bay, one of the leaders, and Luther coming over from the outside in the Crown Lodge. Colours looking for the lead. Linesman is going forward under his big weight, followed by Josh Sticks. Enjoyment, he's a Dane. Ice and Glass about four deep at the moment, then Racing Rider, followed by Ask the Waiter, Nazarich, and out the back, Planet Hollywood. Stony Bay is the leader, as everybody expected him to be, and this marvellous old horse is lobbing along in front as they go to the 1800 mark led by a length and a half to Luther who's got right across to the fence now behind the leader linesman on his outside moving to a clear cut second is going to make it a true stayers race and then delinquent on the inside of morning mail a gap to Jack and Archie on the outside of enjoyment Josh sticks on the outside of he's a Dane a gap to racing rider who's traveling well back in the field at the moment followed closely by ask the waiter ice and glasses in front of those horses and a long gap then to Nazarich and planet Hollywood as last as they go down the back 1,300 metres out in the cup, and Stony Bay setting a true pace, led by a length and a half to linesman. Luther's third, getting the box seat run, followed by Morning Mail on the outside of Delinquent, and then Jack and Archie on the outside of Enjoyment. Further back, Josh Dix, who's three deep around. He's a Dane and racing rider. And then Ice and Glass on the outside of Ask the Waiter. Second last, Planet Hollywood, and Nazarich last about 12 off the lead. Stony Bay continues in the role of pacemaker as they get to the top turn at the 900. Linesman second, keeping him honest. In third place, Luther, followed by Morning Mail. Jack and Archie about to take off three deep, followed by Josh Dix. He's a Dane, is now getting between horses. Further back is Delinquent, then Enjoyment. A good gap to Racing Rider, followed by Ice and Glass, Planet Hollywood. And back at the tail, Nasser Rich and Ask the Waiter got shuffled back to last as they near the turn. He's having no luck at all. Inside the 600 metres mark. Stony Bay the leader. Linesman in second place as they turn for home. Jack and Archie on the outside. Luther's on the fence, followed by Morning Mail. And then he's a day. Nice and glass and Josh Sticks. Ask the waiters a mile back. And I don't think the good Lord could win on Ask the Waiter as they come over the rise. 300 metres out. Stony Bay joined by Linesman. Jack and Archie. Further out, he's a day. Followed by Josh Sticks and Ice and Glass. Jack and Archie, Linesman, Stony Bay coming back again. Jack and Archie, Linesman, Stony Bay, Linesman, 59 and a half kilos fighting back. He's a mighty horse. Linesman beat Jack and Archie. Stony Bay third, then delinquent. Josh Sticks, Luther, Morning Mail, Ice and Glass, Nazarich. Ask the waiter is well back with He's a Dane, followed by Racing Rider, and then Enjoyment and Planet Hollywood is last of all. Oh, boy. Number one, Linesman, ridden by Larry Cassidy. What a horse he is. First start since the Melbourne Cup, and it's a great training performance too by Gay to win a 2,400 metre race with a horse that hadn't started since November the 4th. $9.50 and $3.50. By G, try, trying to, to watch Darren, hoping Darren could win and I've got to say that I was feeling, I think, more emotion in that race than I have at any other race that I can remember calling. And uh, I felt extremely uh, affected uh, emotionally during the running of the race. And I just kept looking back for those pink and purple checks. And at one stage, about 700 out, he got shuffled back to last. And as I said on the turn, not even the good Lord himself would have been able to win on Ask the Waiter. Not that he was all that far away at the finish, but I had to stop looking for him eventually. And when I looked back to the leaders, there was this fabulous little horse, this gutsy, gallant stayer, poking his head out under 59 and a half kilos. First 1200 in 117.43, the last 600 in 36.68, and 230.67, well outside the record. Thanks, Tone. Well, 
this horse is entitled to a Melbourne Cup reception when he comes back. He's off to Auckland, you, you might uh, like to know. He's uh, New Year's Day, and Jack and Archie goes with him. Mm. Where is he? Linesman. I want to give him a clap myself. I'm, uh, I'm president of his fan club. What a mighty little horse he's been. There were plenty of people he thought he needed a paddock after the Melbourne Cup, but he really deserved a long spell. But Gay knows best. And back he comes to win the Summer Cup. And hasn't he been a good horse to Larry Cassidy? Well, here he comes. This marvellous stayer, linesman, who hasn't started since the Melbourne Cup in which he ran a gallant fifth to might and power. And uh, a slogging, gutsy, courageous win under 59 and a half kilos and a great ride again by Larry Cassidy, who gets on so well with this horse. Linesman is a six-year-old bay gilding by touching wood out of line call. Is raced by T.J. Smith, J. Leslie, P. Aldrich, A. Howarth, A. McCormick and M. Grant. Is trained by Gay Waterhouse, responsible for a terrific training effort and ridden by Larry Cassidy. And of course, Linesman carries the famous Harry Lawton colours, Harry having syndicated this horse as a yearling. Second, Jack and Archie, Kevin Moses and both first and second place getters are off to New Zealand uh, to compete in the Auckland Cup. And number two third, Stony Bay, paying a place dividend of $2, one, eight and two. Okay. Um, where have we got to go, Hilt? I'm sorry. Uh, oh, Chelton, let's go. Here's Patsy. <laughs>